Welcome. I am the loud little ducky. Today we're going to go over the Owens v. Eckerd case where a woman is claiming that she is pregnant with twins or was pregnant with twins after only foreplay. We're going to do this in parts. So this is going to be the timeline that you can follow in a linear fashion. So let's go right into it. Let's get to know our litigants. First up, we have Owens, a.k.a. Jane Doe, because even though her name is out there, she likes to be anonymous. It's weird. I don't know. So this is Jane Doe's LinkedIn bio. She is the podcast host with her mother of Nobody Told Me. She has a TEDx out there. She uh, likes to ride horses and apparently is in horse sales. She also is a real estate investor in Scottsdale, Arizona. She apparently went to Penn State University. To date, Owens has entered the court system multiple times and has used the police system against at least three men she had sexual encounters with. Each victim has a unique relationship slash encounter with Owens, ranging from an actual relationship to a one-night stand. After these men respectively ended their time with Owens and acknowledged that they didn't want to pursue her further, she claimed that they abused her or that she was pregnant with their ch child or children, sometimes even both. Following those claims, she enters the legal system to attempt to prove her claims with unconvincing evidence. Next, we have Clayton Eckhart. You may think he looks familiar, and that was because he was an American television personality best known for his appearance and as a contestant on season 18 of The Bachelorette and as the star of season 26, The Bachelor. He also played college football for Missouri and spent training camp with the Seattle Seahawks of the National Football League, which is the NFL, in 2016. He got into real estate and mental health public speaking after The Bachelor, and is in a legal battle with an oral one-night stand, Owens, who claims she was pregnant with Eckhart's twin babies. So let's get into the timeline now. May 2023, when it all happened, the incident. Owens reaches out to Clayton Eckhart on LinkedIn for real estate assistance. This is why I showed you her LinkedIn because that is where it started. On May 20th, the two meet in person for the first time. The two end up having an intimate encounter, which Eckhart describes as only oral sex. The following day, Eckhart tells Owens that the hookup was a mistake. Okay. So right now we have her saying one thing and him saying, this is it, okay? So we have two sides of the story. So this is where we need to get more into the story to figure out who's telling the truth. Because here it's like, oh, well, that sounds convenient that you only did foreplay. But she's claiming this. Like, why would she claim this, right? Then we have May 21st. Clayton makes his intentions clear that he doesn't want to pursue a relationship with her. He apologizes for crossing the professional personal boundary. She cries while refusing to accept what he wants. She asks to have him continue to be her realtor. May 22nd, Owen states that she cannot continue to have him be her realtor if he won't pursue a relationship. He tries to assign another realtor. She does not want that. May 25th, Eckhart blocks her number after asking to be left alone and him threatening to call the police if she doesn't. So, okay. They did whatever they did. Shouldn't have happened. Clayton admits that. But... She's this tore up over one time. It's seeing to be unhinged. Um, and 
if that was the case, I wouldn't want him to be my realtor. I'd be like, yes, please, because this is awkward and I'm not going to be able to continue. But that's what level-headed humans would do. We're not dealing with a level-headed human here, I don't think. That's now we are in June. June 1st, 11 days after their intimate encounter, Owens emails Eckhard a photo of her first positive pregnancy test. And here we have the little pregnancy test showing a very solid one line and a very faint second line. But it's kind of way over there. I don't know if it is supposed to be way over there. But nevertheless, this is what she sends him. And I added the, we're pregnant, because that's basically what she's saying. June 17th, Eckhart purchases a pregnancy test and asked Owens to take it in front of him to confirm the pregnancy. She goes to the bathroom and the result comes out positive. So Clayton makes her take this test in front of him because... He's like, we only had oral. How in the world did you get pregnant with my twins? Or, okay, we don't know about twins yet. My child, after just oral. Like, it's not supposed to work like that. And by in front of him, he means that he made sure that she didn't take anything into the bathroom with her. And she went into the bathroom by herself and did it. Now, does that mean that she doesn't have something in there to do this? Or does that mean that she's still somehow making these pregnancy tests positive? And even if she's making him positive, if Clayton, in fact, did only have oral sex, how is she saying it's his baby? Because let's say she is pregnant at this point. If they only did that, then they're obviously not his. So why is she claiming his? Surely that means she had sex with somebody and they're that person's baby. But she claims she hasn't had sex with anybody else. So, moving on. Um, June 27th, Owen's Iceland story is published on Chicken Soup for the Soul website. Um, I don't fully know too much about it. I mean, I know the story, but it's interesting that it is called Iceland because... That is where Clayton's fantasy suites on The Bachelor happened. We're in Iceland. So, don't know if there's a connection there. But she's come up with this story about meeting a stranger on a plane ride to or from Iceland. It's just very weird timing, basically. It's just odd. July 1st, Owens emails Eckhart to try and convince him to sleep with her and told him that she would get an abortion if he agreed to date her. She wanted a contract. She wanted to date. And she would agree to do anything as long as he would agree to date her. And, I guess, sleep with her. Why are you having to convince people to sleep with you? I mean, she's not an ugly person as far as looks go. So I don't think it's hard to find somebody that would want to be with her. It's just not the people she wants, apparently. July 2nd, Owens emails Eckhart's parents inviting him to her ultrasound. This is weird. Both of them have some weird interactions with each other's parents. Um, because, you know, they met like one time, maybe two by now, and it was a one-night foreplay incident, and 
Owens is talking to his parents? Obviously not because Clayton gave her the information. Nope. And Clayton has talked to her mother too because with this test and things like that, he was hoping that Owens' mother would be like, hey, calm down, da 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 da, maybe talk some sense into her. But no, her parents believe her 100% of the time, and I believe they are enablers. Moving on. All right. So, we have this email that Owen sends Clayton. And the title is only open this if you want option A and will unblock me seriously. Well, how does he know for sure that he wants option A if he doesn't know what option B is or C? Like ha he can he's going to open it and see what his options are. He's not going to be like, "Oh, well, since I opened it, that automatically means I agree with option A." No. Looney says, and if you want option A, I will not post this. I am just looking for support during this incredibly overwhelming time. Final email regarding this. But I wanted to give you the courtesy of showing you the post. I'm attaching the photo I'm going to use. I'm over being treated like shit and at least if this is public, you'll have to give a statement to the media. Not sure when I will put it up. The caption is, surprise! I can't wait for the arrival of these two next Valentine's Day. So this is where we know we're having twins. On a more serious note, their father at Clayton Eckhart has said he wants nothing to do with this process. He has blocked me from messaging him, refuses to see me and his growing babies, and says he will continue to ignore me. He doesn't want to have anything to do with them when they're born and thinks they will negatively impact his dating life. Tag him and let him know what you think. Like, really? And I don't think he said that they were going to negatively impact his dating life. That, that's not why he doesn't want to have anything to do with these children if they are his children. One, he doesn't want anything to do with them because he doesn't believe that he got you pregnant. By science, basically. And then you want to put this out for clout. Please note the following legal waiver. If after proof of opening is obtained, I choose not to respond to this email, I am confirming that its content is true. This includes my acknowledgement of paternity. In addition, by not responding, I am giving my approval to blank to post the above content on social media. Clayton, this is a situation you can't run and hide from. You will need to take accountability for your actions, which created twins. If I can't get you to do it, then maybe the public can convince you to. All the best. Give me a break. And then this is the picture she was going to post. A little pregnancy announcements with the two onesies. Eckhart twins coming February 2024. And they're, they're Valentine's babies. They're going to be love babies. Ugh, it's disgusting. Ultrasound, July 7th, Owen sends Clayton a photo of her alleged ultrasound. This video doesn't match up to the photo, and the video of the ultrasound is labeled 13 weeks in the real YouTube video. Photo dates May 20th to July 7th, when she says she got this, equals six weeks and six days. The video dates May 20th to September 5th equal 15 weeks and three days, but the video says 17 weeks. Also, the ultrasound photo 
shows the date that the encounter happened, not the date of the last missed period, which is what doctors go by when determining fetal age. I'm going to play this video. This is from Nick Vile. He was also on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. He has a podcast called The Vile Files where and Clayton went on to talk about it, but here is the ultrasound video, and it's going to play the one that she sent, Owen sent, to Clayton. Then it's going to show the original from six years ago on YouTube. So let's play this. saying it's a thousand percent here says 17 weeks September 5th 2023 at 11 29 and 32 seconds a.m. notice the clock is not moving then here is the real video it says twin gender at 13 weeks so it's the same video it talks about you know baby B the placenta and then we're going to be having baby A pop up. So baby B, baby A. So that is the video that she sent. Why is the clock not moving on a video? Hmm? We have questions. Now we have the photo. The photo has two dates at the top. It's got the 7723 and 51490, which to me more so matches the image of what a sonogram used to look like back then, as opposed to now. This is not a very clear image. Um, and so that's just my opinion. Can't say for sure. Um, and May 20th to July 7th is six weeks and six days. The pic says six weeks and four days. Obviously, this picture is not taken the same day of the sonogram video. Also, the ultrasound photo shows the date that the encounter happened, not the date of the last missed period, which is what doctors go by. In determining fetal age as we said before but another thing that is on here is that if you notice in the dates at the top when it's listing the year it's just listing the last two digits 2390 but at the bottom where the handwriting is looks like it's in like two different fonts or maybe part of it's written and part of it's not it it has the date listed as 2023 but what it looks like happened was she kept the five and she kept the zero of the 90 but then added the two in front of it and added the 23 there, added the two, and then added a zero in front of, like redid the zero in front of it. It's It looks very doctored in my opinion, but this is what the photo looks like. But I want to show you something else from that's actually true from almost this kind of exact date. So let's jump into that real quick. So oddly enough, my daughter actually ended up having an ultrasound on one of the days that Owens said she had an ultrasound on. The exact day, September 5th, 2023. So, this is the start of her video. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this. You will notice that, you know, it's, it's clear 
Um, and you can see on here, yes, I'm moving the camera around because I'm recording it from the TV screen, but it will come and get closer again. So you'll notice that it has the date at the top, 9-5-23. You will also notice the time on it does move. It said 09 will ago. Let's see what else it says um, time-wise when we move back to it. I thought it was a better picture of timing on here, but I guess not. I may have to, let's see, now it's 36, but you can see that the clock is moving on it. Um, this is what the ultrasound looks like from that day. Now, I'm not saying they all look the same, but they are all pretty, pretty similar. Now, let's look at something else. All right, now that we looked at an ultrasound video, now I want you to look at an ultrasound photo. Now, this is not the photo from that video, but this one is good enough. And she has these posted um, in her room, and it's on a pegboard, as you can see. Little thumbtack down here holding it up. And what we have is I have the hospital redacted and the name redacted, uh, her name redacted, but we have the date 10 10 23. Notice that it's still not written as 2023. It's got the 34 weeks, one day, estimated due date, um, and then this. So notice that the picture pretty much matches exactly what the video is, which is what I wanted to kind of show you, is if she got a printout from an ultrasound in modern day, like today, the printout is going to basically look exactly like what is on your ultrasound screen. It's not going to be, compl it's not going to be a completely different image because, well, that's not what you're getting a picture. That's not what you're seeing on a video. So if you're taking a picture of a video, it, it's going to look the same. It's not going to be like grainy looking like. That's why I think that the photo she sent Clayton is actually from the 90s, which is one of the dates on the ultrasound that she forgot to redact when editing. Little editing mistake there. So that is just something I wanted to show you that actually happened around the, the same time as Owens is claiming she's pregnant and sending these ultrasound videos and pictures to what an actual one is. And my grandson is actually here now, so <laughs> mine is not fake. But anyways, all right, in closing of part one, I like to end my videos with a quote um, of the day. It's actually going to be a quote of the video because I'm going to be pumping these videos out probably multiple parts in a day if I can, but our quote to end this video on is, be careful what is done in the dark. Sometimes light comes to light sooner than later. Better hope what you're playing around with is worth losing what you have. And I think that sums up really well what part one is about uh, with editing and doctoring these videos and photos and having fake stuff because you don't want this stuff to come into the light. So, hope that you like this video and it's more of a linear path to understanding this. I will be putting up part two hopefully today as well. If you like this video and want to be here when the rest of the parts come out, please subscribe, like this video, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. All right.